when, when a, a prisoner uh, is first sentenced to the facility after they've been convicted and sentenced to a, a you know a time in, inside a prison, they are, are, are they are assessed uh, and, and given a sentence plan. And if drug and alcohol uh, problems uh, are identified, or if there is some of the offending is linked to to uh, drug and alcohol issues, they they may be um, identified as a, a candidate to go through a drug treatment unit. You know, looking at, at rehabilitation or treatment in the addiction field, there's there's residential, there's community or residential treatment centres that people can go to. So so I, I imagine and describe it as a as a uh, a residential service or a, a treatment facility within the corrections environment, within the prison environment, and, and there are some things about that that kind of make them a good fit, like like separation from outside influences or outside community. Um, yes, so so the, the kind of the physical boundaries as well as the the, the, the policy boundaries of, of everything that is kind of custodial, you, you can create a good fit with with this the type of treatment that we do, which is based on therapeutic community. The motivation is, is to reduce recidivism, to reduce uh, you know crime, to reduce imprisonment, to reduce the the seriousness of crime, uh, and, and therefore reducing the impact uh, on individuals, on families, on communities, on the nation of, of people committing crimes and, and being incarcerated. Um, I mean, it has a huge rippling effect. And um, so, 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 you know, from, from not an, an economic point of view, um, does it make sense, which it does, it, it also makes sense from a, from a national, um, you know, uh, and community point of view. The, the most recent research um, from Corrections shows that um, uh, for someone coming through our, uh, one of our treatment uh, units, drug treatment units, um, there's a 30% reduction in reoffending. And um, and for any person that does reoffend, the seriousness of their offending has will also reduce by around about a third or just over a third. So so that that's big numbers, you know. And internationally, that's that that's quite an achievement. You always see some ins inspirational stuff happening and, and, and stories that you hear. Um, you know, an example is where perhaps a, a parole board judge has seen an individual, you know, every year for for a number of years. And it's kind of gets to know that person and, and gets to see what they are like, how they present, how they speak, and and what they say and what their attitude is and demeanour. And then and then uh, you know we've heard that they, you know they've completed a, this person's completed a, a drug treatment unit program uh, and, and go to their next hearing and they and the judges are amazed or the board is uh, amazed at the changes that they see in front of them. We we work with motivation, of course, and um, a lot of people are. are how we externally motivated to, to to complete their plan. Obviously, you know, um, if they've got a treatment plan and they've got some requirements and they complete it, there's potential for an early, early release. So, so yes, yeah, some people are very much externally motivated or have motivation to say, if I do this and, and get through this, I'll get an early release date, which is true. So um, our clinicians um, who are, you know, well-trained, professional uh, addiction workers in the field, um, uh, work with that motivation, um, and and then and the community, if you like, works with it as well, and um, so so over time, um, despite themselves, often um, that that externally motivating those external motivating factors become internalised. So, so they they do kind of um, realise that uh, you know that that they've got an opportunity there to um, not just do their time but use their time.